Welcome to BIV Today, the daily business podcast from Business in Vancouver newspaper and BIV.com. I'm Tyler Orton. I'm a reporter here at BIV. And uh, we have an interesting topic today because I think, look, if you drive through a parkade or you're just walking through a parking lot now, chances are you're going to spot one of those EV chargers. But I'm wondering... I don't know, do BC drivers have the etiquette necessary for this proliferation of electric vehicles right now? With us today to talk about a new campaign that's being spurred by a team over at BCIT, it is Kim Dotto. He is the Dean of Applied Research at the British Columbia Institute of Technology. So Kim, I wanna thank you for joining us on the show today. Not a problem, happy to uh, talk to you about the EV uh, charging etiquette. Well, it's interesting because one of the things that I, I think a lot of people talk about is, say, range anxiety and just kind of that feeling that some of these EV drivers get. Tell me a little bit about range anxiety and how that affects behavior, especially with uh, these new kinds of vehicles that have really grown in popularity the last few years. So range anxiety refers to people who are new to electric vehicles who are, are a little bit nervous about whether or not they're gonna make it to their next destination. So the original electric vehicles that came out, things like the Nissan Leaf, uh, had a shorter range than people would normally expect in an electric or in a gasoline vehicle. So uh, you fill up your car uh, with gas, you can drive 300, 400, 500 kilometers. The original uh, electric vehicles had a much shorter range, maybe 100 to 150 kilometers. And so people were a bit nervous, am I gonna to get to my next destination? When they first came out, there weren't a lot of charging stations available uh, at locations. You either kind of had to charge at home or you charged at work or very uh, few designated places. It's much different now. There's a lot more charging systems uh, available uh, across the city. Uh, some are free, some are f uh, for pay. Um, even along the highway, if you drive along Coquihalla now, there are charging stations at the rest stations uh, as you uh, travel. So. Range anxiety was a very uh, big thing when electric vehicles first came out, uh, and especially for new drivers. Once you're a seasoned uh, electric vehicle driver, uh, and even more so today because it's more prevalent, it's not as big of an issue as it used to be. You know, one of the things I, I recall from a couple years ago, there was a big convention, uh, the Union of BC Municipalities, and I got to go on a site visit to BCIT. And I got to see kind of the setup there for charging stations for electric vehicles. And there's even stories that they're sharing about um, some parking etiquettes, maybe some people occupying spaces when they should not have been, because there's pretty prime spaces that you can get uh, for those EV charging stations. But tell me a little bit about some of the concerns that we have right now with proper EV etiquette. Part of the problem is, again, when you're new to uh, anything, uh, there, there's a certain culture or a certain etiquette that goes around uh, new technology, whether it's not using your cell phones in public or on transit. Same thing happens when you're charging with an electric vehicle. Electric vehicle spaces or charging spaces are still fairly rare in a parking lot. So if you look at BCIT, we have parking for hundreds, if not thousands of vehicles, but we only have a limited number of electric vehicle charging spots. So the idea is to share them uh, as much among users as you possibly can. So you only come in and charge when you need to charge. You don't stay when you're finished charging. And if you're not an electric vehicle, you probably shouldn't be parking in a electric vehicle charging spot. You're right that they seem very accessible or, or they're, people consider them kind of perks for parking because they're usually located closer to building. That's kind of a technology thing. If you have to actually get power out into a parking lot, it's much cheaper to uh, do it closer to a building than it is farther away from a building. So a lot of the location of, of parking spots for electric vehicle charging systems is done on a technical basis. And then there is some, um, at some places, some companies do provide it as a perk, as an incentive for people to convert from an internal combustion or ICE vehicle to a electric vehicle. So there's a lot to be learned. Uh, often um, people who buy the new electric vehicles don't really get a lot of instruction from their the company that they bought it from. The car dealerships give them a very limited amount of information on the technical part of charging. How do you plug it in? How far you can go and that sort of stuff. But they don't really discuss a lot about the uh, the etiquette or the culture around using electric vehicles. 
Yeah, it's kind of like going to a bike shop. You just buy the bike, but it's not as if you're going to get instructions on, you know, uh, the proper signals or proper etiquette there. So I like how you can kind of think about that with EVs as well. And it brings us to, I guess, kind of the topic at hand, though. But, but the BCI team, uh, you know, um, students as well, have been working on, like, helping out with this etiquette stuff, e even creating um, some interesting ways to get that message across. Tell me a little bit about this new campaign. We've been going through looking at various ways for a number of years uh, to be able to do the cultural, the uh, the social aspects of the electric vehicle charging. We're very heavily into the technology side. As you said, you've been to BCIT and seen the facilities, the uh, Oasis project with the large solar panels and the electric vehicle charging systems. And that's the technical side. But the social side has also been a big concern for us over years, uh, looking at how people actually use this stuff. So we looked at a whole... Uh, huge range of uh, signage issues, uh, education programs, and, and various other things to try and get the message across about how you should be using these, the proper etiquette involved. It came up that, you know, wouldn't it be nice if there is was a, uh, a small um, short video that we could use to show people what the proper etiquette was in, in a polite way and in, in an engaging way. Nobody wants to watch a 10 minute video over how to, you know, proper way to charge an electric vehicle. So uh, Joey DeBell, who is one of our uh, lead researchers in the area, came up with the idea of using some of our digital media students to produce a very short animated uh, set of videos that we could use uh, and provide to industry and provide to people to uh, distribute just to educate people around uh, the etiquette in a friendly, non-threatening, uh, you know, enjoyable kind of humorous way. So it, it's something that we've been thinking about for a long time. Um, but uh, Joey came up with the idea and found the students to work with. And uh, it's been a great success so far. So for maybe the people that are watching this on video, why don't we throw to one of those clips? Uh, unfortunately, if you're only listening to the audio version of the podcast, I'll I'll encourage you to go to BIV.com and watch the video right now. But uh, why don't we jump to that, Kim? Don't be an Olivia Overstayer. Move your car once it's charged. Yeah, so I mean, that's kind of a pretty fun way. And like you said, it's pretty quick. It's not like it feels like a lecture. Uh, I like kind of the humor in that, like calling one person, say, an overstayer. Um, what right. were some of the thought processes that went into just making this an engaging thing that people would actually want to pay attention to? Well, we relied a lot on our students. Uh, the students in our digital media program are, are actually very good for uh, doing things like that. They, their program, um, they spend a lot of time looking at issues around how messages are going to be accepted, uh, how things are going to be uh, received or perceived by the public, uh, whether it's in an animation or some other digital media form. So we started with a lot of conversations. Uh, we talked to a lot of people uh, within BCIT, but outside of BCIT about what they thought the issues were, um, how they would like to be uh, presented with them. So we did some focus groups uh, internally. We went through a number of iterations and uh, came up with the, the idea for the three different scenarios, the overstayer, the uh, internal combustion engine, and the perk parking. Um, and went on to develop those from there. And, and like I said, it's pretty much an iterative process. We, we had the students in on a weekly basis, uh, uh, speaking with the researchers and one of our student researchers who uh, actually is the voiceover for the, uh, the um, animations. Um, so just kind of a, a, st a standard developing process with a lot of input from a lot of people. How do you think, you know, British Columbia or maybe Vancouver is doing with adoption and uh, as well as adoption of etiquette, especially compared with other jurisdictions? Because I, I think these EVs, they're fa proving fairly popular on the West Coast, especially when you look at incentives that are available. What, what's your take on overall adoption trends? BC and Vancouver especially are much higher than a lot of other places. Um, there are technical issues around uh, electric vehicles that make them more advantageous in certain areas than others. Uh, they if you're in the deepest, darkest winter in northern Canada, they're not uh, as functional. Um, 
battery uh, life isn't as long distances uh, you um, can't travel as far because you have to use energy to maintain the battery temperatures and things like that. So it's certainly jurisdictionally um, different. Uh, also the lifestyle factors, the distances you have to drive. Um, again, it was more of an issue with a, with a Nissan LEAF with the uh, other vehicles which uh, have a much longer range or some of the plug-in electric hybrids that uh, have both gas and uh, electric uh, vehicles or, or electric motors in them. It uh, works better in jurisdictions, but BC overall, and certainly in Vancouver, has had a very, very high adoption rate. Uh, in terms of uh, EV etiquette, you see it a few times where, where people take advantage of the situation, but I'm an EV driver myself. I have my own Nissan Leaf that I've had for a number of years. Uh, and uh, in general, people are actually pretty good. You get a few uh, repeat offenders, but um, generally people treat it as the service it is. Um, right now, a lot of the charging is free, and that has been an issue um, because of the tariff structure in BC around how uh, electricity is bought and sold. Uh, but that's changing uh, with the developments uh, in the regulatory area. So what you're likely to see is a lot more um, electric vehicle charging stations that actually charge for the energy as opposed to just charge for the parking. Uh, and that will probably make some difference in how people um, perceive the uh, the usage or how they actually use the charging infrastructure. But in general, uh, the etiquette for the most part uh, among EV drivers is actually pretty good. Well, presumably, if we have more adoption of these vehicles, we'd likely see, you know, kind of the stations, the number of stations available, that they're probably going to go up, you know, and coincide with that a little bit. I, I'm wondering, though, uh, if we get kind of this proliferation of uh, vehicles, there's going to be that much more of a need for our tensions to remain kind of cool in these situations too, right? Right. And one of the things that we're working on at BCIT is providing more opportunities for people to charge. So as the number of vehicles go up, it's harder and harder to get into one of these free stations or into one of these uh, stations that is not at your house. There is a significant issue for people who live in older buildings, uh, say multi-unit residential buildings that were built you know, even the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, where there is not enough power supply to the building for everybody to have an electric vehicle charger for their own, um, say, in their own parking spot in their, in their apartment garage. So we've been working with uh, municipalities uh, in the lower mainland and as well uh, with some of the uh, building owners and, and tenants to prototype new systems for on-street charging, um, for uh, power sharing in these multi-unit residential buildings so that we can get more charging into those uh, areas for people who want to have an electric vehicle taking the pressure off of all of these other stations that are around for people. So it is an issue. Um, there are solutions coming up, um, but so far we haven't reached anywhere close to a tipping point. I've never seen a, a fist fight at a uh, EV charging station and I hope never to see that. Fingers crossed for that. Um, I, I guess the last thing that I wanna ask you about is kind of getting that message out. You had mentioned that the plan is to distribute this to uh, groups, uh, organizations. Um, would the idea be like, uh, BCIT, for example, maybe you could play some of these on monitors that aren't being used, or just how would you imagine getting this message out to um, so many British Columbians? Well, we do a lot of that already. So we have a standard number of social media channels. We have our uh, BCIT uh, innovation blogs. We also work a lot with a number of different organizations. As I say, we work with the, uh, work with the municipalities around the Lower Mainland. We work with a number of uh, other organizations. So we make it available to them to put out to their uh, customers, to their clients, to their membership. Uh, we rely on things like Business in Vancouver to uh, get us out through the media. Uh, a number of other media outlets have, have contacted us already around uh, this story. So getting our uh, our stuff out isn't really a big problem. There, there's a lot of uh, avenues to get it out there. Um, and this seems to be taking off. It seems to have a, a, a very high uh, recognition factor already in the last few days that it's already been out. Well, excellent. Uh, Kim, uh, cool stuff that's going on. I always like getting these messages out there. And I just want to thank you for joining us on the show today. Not a problem. My pleasure. Uh, anytime. And if you want to come back and visit us at BCIT again and see what we're doing uh, once COVID is over and we're giving tours again, we can uh, certainly accommodate you.
It's always fun. I, I've done many stories over on the campus. I, I always find uh, something interesting there. So I'll take you up on that offer once it's safe. But uh, yeah, cheers. Sounds great. Have a great day. Well, excellent. That was Kim Dotto. He is the Dean of Applied Research at BCIT. And that is it for the show today. But we will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, you can go to BIV.com for more interviews and more videos. Be a Peter Perker. Only perk when you need to charge. <laughs> <laughs>